Okay. He's going to be putting it in, uh, you know, putting all these all these uh, contacts in. So you guys will be able to have like over a th like thirteen hundred lenders. So it's pretty cool. Then you'll be able to pull up their contact information. Um, I'm going to do a second one that's for the family offices and hedge funds because there's twelve thousand of them, and it's contacts. It's not firms. Like one firm has like forty contacts because you get their CEO, they get their CO, you get their portfolio managers. A lot of family offices. Seven of the databases are just real estate investors, known fix and flip investors, known buy and hold investors for single family, multifamily, RV and mobile home parks. And these those are known. So you'll be able to access them and be able to pull up a lot of information. I'm going to have him do a second one because obviously there's people that if they're just doing single family, they don't really know how to talk to a family office. We don't want a lot of new people blowing them up and destroying relationships. So I'm not going to really go into this much because you guys can play with this one. And then um, I can, like I said, it's, it's working right now. So you can use it tonight. Um, and then, like I said, probably over the next 30 days, I'll have the other 500 lenders added to it. So the lender list will probably go to like all the way across the, the, the bottom. Uh, and then you can also break these down by the individual list. But why would you want to do that? You can go to all the filters. You can define the filters. So if you want to find, you want to go to Ohio and you want to find a lender, you can find a lender in Ohio. So I think it's really good for, for everybody. So that's the lender list I've been working on. So we'll have that, you know, that's a, I think it's going to be a solid thing. So I just want to show it to you guys. And just, like I said, go to the, you just go into the Facebook group and download it. It's ready to go. So, and then we're going to, like I said, we're going to add, and if you guys know of a lender or somebody who's not on there, refer them to me. So, is there anybody have any questions about that? Gabrielle, how are you? you? Let me see if you're, make sure you're in. Hello. Hey, how are you? Hey, good, good. Actually, I have um, a deal that I might need some it's a creative deal, so I'm not sure what my options are, but um, okay. Do you want to just yeah. sell to the group and see if they got any feedback? Sure. So it's a property in Truckee, California. Okay. And the is. purchase price is six fifteen. So the the owner wants to do like usually, you know, with creative deals, a lot of times they'll want to refi you out like in 10, 15 years. But yeah. this guy doesn't. He wants the he wants the loan for the full duration. To, so 30 years at 4.5 for interest rate. And he wants 48K down, which is less than 10%, which is pretty good because usually like a 10% entry fee is what you like less than 10% is like what we look for. So it's right around there. So it's actually really, really good for the property's pretty good shape. Um, it was a rental and that's what I would, a long-term rental. And that's what I would probably continue to do with. And, okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. That sounds like a good deal. Do you want to yeah. present? 615, 615 asked 48,000 down and, and <laughs> he's holding a note for how long? 30 years at 4.5 percent interest or something like that correct yeah he said the realtor told me that like he he wants to avoid uh capital gains all right so you have a realtor so that was question number one you have a realtor involved in this transaction correct yeah so the listing agreement is with the realtor no that's fine in, in california yeah. you want there to be a realtor involved Otherwise, oh, okay. you risk going to you risk going to jail in California if you don't have a realtor involved. Why is that? As a realtor, as a realtor, you should have a realtor involved in every deal. Just that's just my opinion as a realtor. Uh, well, that's a that's a wrong opinion. That's a wrong opinion generally because then you just got to pay your realtor. Okay. But in California, if you if you quote unquote take advantage of somebody. You can go to jail and have your your whole transaction reversed and pay for it. So mm -hmm. California is very weird about how you do business. You want to have a realtor involved and a lawyer review everything in order to avoid it. I I walked away from a deal in California just because of that issue. It was a great deal, 
but mm-hmm. the lawyer said walk away from it because the owner can come back and get you um and claim that you took advantage of them so we like new that's... york what so california is similar to new york I don't know yeah. about that in New York. I'm, I'm, I know about it only in California. I'm, I'm licensed in two states, and I concur with that. To, they, they can come and get you anytime. We have in both my states. I have to disclose that I'm a real estate broker. But if I go in and I and I tell them a price or set a price with them, I am setting myself up for a tremendous liability that my E and O insurance would not cover in uh, Colorado or Florida. And that's why, and that's why it pays not to be a real. And that's why you don't want to be a realtor in this in this business because you have know, to. Man. I, know, man. I, make, I make fifty grand a transaction, so I kind of dig that. <laughs> well, if you're selling other people's property, then absolutely. But if you want to just invest your own property, you know, with a different story. Well, I get the, I, well, 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 if I'm a buyer agent, I get that buyer co-op. So I'm 50 grand ahead on any deal that I buy. If I buy a flip, whatever I buy, I get that buyer co-op and I can just roll that 50 grand right into the property. Well, that's all nice and good, but you can go and negotiate a better price if you don't have a buyer's agent. I've done it. Hey, Gabrielle, right, that's completely a personal opinion, man. There's no fact behind that. Yeah, I know. Guys, I know. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's the same. It's the same as people thinking. If, uh, yeah, yeah, if people are saying I'm going to use a buyer's agent because I can hey, go and get a buyer's agent. Can you use Gabriella? Uh, I'm, I'm here. Right, but your 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 child is talking yeah. over everyone. So so there, you could debate all day long whether it pays to be a realtor or not. I, I, okay, I mean, the point is, in some states, there's a reason to have a realtor involved. In other states, there's no need. That, okay. That's the reality of it. Well, let's, let's go. Let's go back to just talking about Gabriel. Let's, 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 let's look at the deal itself. Okay. So what are you trying to what are you trying to do? Are you trying to raise the forty eight k? Yeah, I mean, there's I'm I'm working on the other expenses right now. Uh, I'm trying to get insurance and and looking at the property. It, it, they might need a little bit of work, um, okay. but minor stuff. So I'm working on that now. The problem is, I called the realtor today. It was listed, I think, last night. Last night or the right? night? Yeah, the night before. Yeah. And well, the. <laughs> The worst part about it is that um, they're trying to get offers by tomorrow at one, and uh, the, walk away. the weird, the weird thing is, is that so the the owner wants so even though he's going to finance it, the owner still wants you to get qualified by a lender. And they just listed it last night. They're only giving you like that like, sounds fishy. Like, it's like it's just like trying to push you in a pressure box. Yeah, no kidding. I was like, holy cow. Um, so, but, so what, do they want, I mean, what does that mean, qualified by a lender? What, what does that so, mean? So like a pre-approval. They basically want a pre-approval from a lender, want, even though they're not going to use lenders. It's really, they, we, I don't know. They, they want proof of funds. Proof of funds. Proof of funds or pre-approval is what they need. Yep. Yeah, proof of funds. I'll, send, I'll, give you, I'll give you a letter. I'll give you a letter with my lending 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 company head on it that that you you you're approved pending whatever. I mean that's that's such a the proof of funds routine is like you can go on on ten different websites and get one of those for 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 a song and a dance that mm-hmm. means nothing. Yeah, exactly. There's I mean there's a couple of companies like you get one from Kogo. You get one from Kogo and it's legit because they do have money and they will. Mm-hmm. But they're expecting you to kind of go through them, but there's no way you're going to probably put this deal together in the time frame that they would need that the lender would need. Because the lenders are going to take 21 to 40. 45 days to do it. But what Kogo will, if you do, if you have all your paperwork that they require in their, in their call on their checklist, you they will be 21 to 28 days business days to go through well, their underwriting. Well, in fairness, you could close probably faster with some companies, but I mean, why are they in a rush to get these offers in? Like, like what's you know, what, what's the, on the deal? property? Are there some liens on it? Because it sounds like there might be some liens on it. Or something coming um, up. He a divorce or something? Because he moving too fast. I mean, like he just only posted it less than twenty four hours. Did he want to speak as a realtor? Yeah. speak as a realtor while they're doing it? I know why they're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a seller. It's a seller's market, and it's probably it's probably crazy. I mean, that's why. Why would why wouldn't they? I mean, 
is it listed in the MLS? It is. That's why, man. I mean, it's it's that it's they're probably getting good traffic, getting good. Uh, they're they're not going to demand they're not going to demand offers unless they already have people saying they're either they either have offers in hand or they have other people saying that they're going to write offers. That's the only reason. It's, it does not benefit the sellers to rush people if they don't have anybody to rush. We see the MLS oh, yeah. time look stupid as hell when it says uh, all offers must be in by Saturday the fifteenth and it's already Friday the twenty seventh and there's and it's still listed. So they, yeah. they, they, you know they, they know that they're going to get the offers and honestly they probably don't need you to be honest with you. They probably have somebody they probably have more than enough offers already or more than enough people interested in it that they don't need one more person. They just say, hey get me the shit and we'll do it. My other question for you is, why do you want to do business in California? All right. Let's try not to get political on this right now. because just... No, no, it's not a political question. It's just not a friendly place to invest in. I know. Well, this might be a good segue for me to go in and talk about what next week, because when Justin's doing the, his presentation next week, he's going to be doing prop wire and pretty. All the, all the ones that we talk about that some people have never seen, so you'll actually get to see it. I mean, are you probably seen pretty, but with prop wire and privy and prop stream, he's going to be using his chat GPT and a couple of his other sources. And I think with Gabriel's thing about like trying to find the properties, I think a lot of people can find that these, these are pretty good. Privy has a lot of MLS because Benson is literally, he's subscribing. He has some agreements, like he's pulling in MLS all the time, almost every month or something. He's adding a new one and he's got agreements with them. But with prop wire, you can find. You can get the pre foreclosures. You can get the probates. You can get on market and off market because he was able to. Justin, when I did the two hours, when I was with him for two hours, he was able to contact a realtor and make an offer. And her listing was 119 days old, and she was happy to get the offer because she was going to lose the. Uh, she actually was probably going to lose the listing, and uh, he was able to make an offer on. I don't know if he got it. Um, I haven't talked to him about that, but he's going to make a two-hour presentation where you guys can ask him questions next week, and I'm going to That's moderate. Going to be very, that'll be yeah. very informative. Very informative, Nate. I'm looking forward to that. And with PropWire, they actually have some work to tell you. There's some equity stuff. There's actually, it's really detailed. And the fact that PropWire is free, compared, you know, Privy is about $1,000 a year. Benson will give you, might give you a deal because of a drop of my name. But PropWire is a, has a free and it's phenomenal. I was pretty blown away by what I was, we were able to find on and off market. Privy on and off market as well. And they, you know, get, Privy will give you pictures. So if you're going to that house in Columbus, you might have the pictures of houses similar, almost like comps, where you can see the finishes and you can see, literally, it's it's phenomenal. I think these are the great programs. And coupled with him, uh, with his uh, AI program, he's he's showing AI in a way that he can um, he can use Hunter.io, which is like Hunter, like Deer Hunter. He can use Hunter.io where you can actually find this stuff in AI. It'll pull up. Like you can, like we went and found broke uh, lenders that have broker programs, and he was able to take those and enter, put those email addresses from the AI program into Hunter IO and actually send emails. And he came up with PS, PS Chat GPT, the AI program for for questions, ten questions that you could ask a lender that has a broker program, and it came up with ten or twelve questions, and he was able to copy and paste those into the email. And he was able to send those emails off really quick. But uh, we're going to have a really good two-hour presentation next Monday night at 6 o'clock. So, and I think everybody's going to learn from that. Um, and then, like I said, it's all free. Chat GPT-3 is, is free. They came out with four. It's $20 a month. You can get Chat GPT-3 for 20 bucks. I heard four is 50 Is it 50? I thought it was 20 but I don't know. That's what I heard. 20, so 20 is for three. And some, and I think I, re, I saw somewhere where they're saying that they're going to bring four in at fifty a month because it can double what three can do. Even though I haven't got it down pat yet, still working on it. I'm trying to see who has who has who has TV on. Not me. Okay. I don't know who to turn off. So it doesn't tell me that. Um, so it's, so we're gonna have that two hour presentation. Hard. Yeah. You know, or is it, you? At an earlier time, is it me? Yeah. At 30. Do you have something like TV on? Oh, there you go. All right. Yeah. So I'm getting four because 
like I said, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working on a lot of stuff for that. It's only tools. There's not, there's a lot of tools, like almost a thousand tools. It's like, it's not perfect. It's not going to do a lot of, you know, I think people are going to be careful with it, but I'm using it to basically, you can, you know, Justin built a website in like 15 minutes. He showed that to us a couple of weeks ago. You guys, all, everybody was on here a couple of weeks ago when he was on, remember that when Ch Chino was on his buddy Chino and Chino showed the website that Justin built him and he used the AI for it. So I, I, there's a lot of issues with it, um, with AI, but I think honestly, well, let's use it as a tool. Let's define the use and have a very narrow scope of use. So that way we're not, you know, we can find a way to make it work for everybody. And if it doesn't work for you, you don't like it, no big deal. But I think that's what we're going to have as a two hour presentation. And then, like I said, in, uh, in May, we're going to have uh, two securities attorneys on uh, one night. And they're going to talk about if you're raising capital, doing anything that requires SEC. Because, you know, we talked to a couple sessions about uh, Regulation D versus Regulation A, um, different ways to raise capital, how to how to do it right without having the guys in the blue windbreakers show up at your, at your office, because that's usually not a pleasant thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, so they're going to have two, we're going to have two securities attorneys. I just don't know which... Which night it'll be in May because both of them that said they, they want to do it are both tied up until until May. Um, there's also I, I put some links in today into the group for you guys if you're interested in ever raising capital. Like Amy Wan as a security attorney, if she does it, if you get her all the stuff she needs on Monday, she'll have your offering ready to go by Friday. It's like eight thousand dollars, but it's all compliant with the SEC, all the paperwork, the offer memorandums, all the subscription agreements, everything we've gone over in the class. She gets it all done for like eight grand, which is, you know, these guys that are out there raising $5 million, $10 million for multifamily complexes and all that, they're doing okay. regulation D. You know, but you want to get a securities attorneys. But I think with AI, going back to that, you'll be able to get to the point where you could actually use one of the tools in AI in that 987 tools list that I posted, where you can use the program to actually build like a website for an offering. So you think about it from start to finish, if you got the different programs, you got Privy or PropWire, you're able to find the property, you can end up generating your emails and your responses. At the same time, you can you Privy, PropWire and PropStream have somewhat ability to do your valuations and your little bit of your analysis to decide if it's worth it where you can make an LOI. And you could probably generate, using AI, you could probably generate some kind of an offering, throw some pictures on there, from the, that website and uh, basically put some pictures and send it to a lender or you send it to a group of investors. So there's a lot of, I think there's a process that I think we're going to try to develop. So internally, so we have it for the whole group where everybody has a process that basically will allow you to work circles around competitors where you already have the funding because I'd like to integrate our lenders list and our investors list with it. So that way you guys could actually generate like, hey, I'm going out to some investors now. I'm putting an LOI and can I get, some, you know, you're not going to be able to obviously sign money that night because it's a process, but you could at least get interest coming back from people who may want to fund it. And then you could invite them to a, a capital raising party. And if you're under, and if you're on doing regulation D 506 C, you can advertise it everywhere, but you can only have accredited investors invest. We had that conversation a couple of weeks ago. If you're doing a, a 506B, you can't advertise it except for people you know. Like I could advertise it to you guys if I'm doing one, but I can't go out and put it on Facebook or fly a balloon over, you know, which is bad timing to talk about flying a balloon. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. so that's kind of the direction we're going there um, as far as being able to do the AI. Um, but I think that's going to be good. I think I, what I really wanted you guys to do this week is really spend some time on the lender list going through it and like for any deals you're kind of working on internally, try to match up lenders that'll work for you. Cause that's really important to get these lenders down. And like I said, we're going to add 500 lenders, 500 more. And then if anybody has any other deals, I mean, let's talk about it tonight. If you got any deals that are pressing or anything, anything you help with. And we're working in some other, you know, we have, we have about, I think we have seven lenders in our group. So we only got a couple I, of them. Actually, something just came across my feed. Somebody's looking. I don't know how much you're looking for. They have a experienced investor. I'm sorry, experienced flipper um, in Nebraska. Single family. 
and they're looking to borrow money and they're offering 4.75% interest per month. Per month. That's not are, bad for a month. I don't know they, what they're looking for yet, though. I'm going to send him a, I'm sending him a message now. Are they looking to borrow money? Yeah, they're looking to borrow money. Oh, well, good luck. I mean, they're not looking to find that on too many of our lenders because most people are over, you know, heart. You know, and uh, the hard money stuff, like Leonard Rosen and the other people with Pitbull and um, NPLA and AAPL, all the lending private lender associations are going to be are really ramping up trying to get rid of the term hard money. They just want to start calling it private money, and uh, they're going to pull it off because they've got lobbyists and all that. NPLA and AAPL. You guys remember I went to the Pitbull conference in 2019 October. And uh, it's probably one of the best conferences if you can have it. You can go as a person, as an individual. It's pretty, you can go for, I think it's like $1,500 for VIP, not including hotel and airfare. It's well worth it because you'll have probably 100 sponsors and a lot of them like Rock Capital. Like if you want to loan money and you want to be a lender, you can, you can use Rock Capital's money and they white label it. So nobody knows it actually comes from them, even though you're the one lending it. They have a correspondent program white label so it's a good opportunity to get in there and like we're telling also new people like you could get in and double track if you're looking to build income and cash flow and you're just starting out or instead of having to go out there and find 100 percent money which you're not going to find being new you could start as a private money broker and a wholesaler and you could actually there's a way you can actually double dip because you can wholesale a property and then you know somehow you know there's a way you can work around it and broker the, the money broker the loan to uh, some of the lenders. So has anybody else signed up for any of the lender programs? Because Vizio is like, Vizio right now is paying up to five points. Wait, wasn't it, that's another, that's another one you you suggested. Yeah, and I've, I've had that. I, I put, it's in the, it's in the files tab. Because I was trying to download some of the requirements and I couldn't download it. It wouldn't download. Okay, let me, I'll make sure I send it to you. Um, okay. and it emails some of that stuff. Some people have had issues with the files tab, but I will make sure you get Vizio. And okay. you can actually, I'll just give you their website. You can go right to their broker link. All right. Vizio's yeah, paying, uh, Vizio is paying up to five points right now. Now that's not, they're not paying five points on every program, but they also do have a short-term rental program. So if you start running to people looking for funding on short-term rentals and VRBO and Airbnbs, they have one of, they're one of the few that have a really good, they have a really good program for that. And John Sperling's awesome. You guys can talk to John. He's probably one of the nicest guys in there. And Vizio is like Vizio, Ground Floor, Lima One, Lending One, Kogo. Um, Briscoe is actually in, was one of my big lenders. They are actually in contraction right now because they've got so much money out there. Almost, they're almost as bad as Signature Bank. <laughs> mm. They've got all their money. They've got all their money out and they're trying to get it in. You know, get oh, it from, Lord. They want yeah, yeah, it. I was wondering how that was going to going to affect the uh, private money lenders. I don't think it is. You don't, don't think it's just just the public? I don't know. I don't know. We I mean, don't I've been... have the capital requirements or any of that those kind of restrictions that would cause a problem. It's just yeah. them and them only. So there's yeah. never going to be an issue with that. Uh, Briscoe Briscoe is a family office that does real estate, so they don't have to go through. They don't have all the regulation. It's their own. It's the family money. I forget who Mr. Briscoe was. He's, he's, he's actually dead. I think mean, Mr. Briscoe himself, I think he was like a, I forget what their family did as the industry. You know, you guys know just how like Kevin's family's automotive and, and real estate in Denver. Um, you know, they have, a, you know, the Briscoe family was like kind of like his family. And they, um, but they, uh, they're extended. They're overextended right now, they told me. So Heather told me. That who's their uh, she's their real estate uh, underwriter for them, so they're a little they're a little in contraction right now. So contraction or retraction is like right when the pandemic happened, a lot of lenders and stuff went into contraction. They like didn't want to put any money out, but a lot of them like the bank types have regulations. These these are family offices or these are private. This is private money, and a lot of people will put money in. I mean, you, we got lenders in our group. I mean, they could put it into Lee Arnold and give him $200,000 of their own money and he can do all the finding the clients or his brokers and underwriting it and doing all the paperwork and just cutting a check to him every month. 
you know, whatever on the returns, you can also set it up where you have servicing. So, and you're making the, the clients paying, the, the borrowers paying the servicing fees. So literally you, uh, Evergreen Servicing will actually, not related to Evergreen Colorado, that's just their name. They will, I think they're in Washington state. They will actually can distribute money up to five people on a loan. So they can give, they can actually pay, you know, the one, yeah, they can pay five different people. So it's pretty cool when you have servicing. Are you there? You're lighting. You're lighting up. Someone keeps uh, playing the TV. Who's who's got the TV on? <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to figure out who's anybody's got TV or radio on. No, I, I, mean, I don't like. I don't like to do the thing where I have to have raised hands. So that's why I kind of sometimes leave it open, but sometimes that's the the worst part of it. I don't know. Does anybody have any other things? Well, I, mute my own, I mute my own mic just out of curious, courtesy. Oh, I know. That's what I try to tell people to do, but I try to leave it open a little bit. So, yeah, so we got a lot of good stuff going on. Hey, Danny, watch out. I watched the Canyon Courier on Thursday because that big article is coming out on that, that project over at El Rancho. Which, which, which one? The, uh, the, the one that. No, the ones with the. Uh, you know, the hotel and the car wash and the Foothills Fire Station and all that. Oh, oh, oh all right. Jack, Jack Buchanan. So, yeah, I'm yeah. Not, yeah, I'm not following that one too much. I, yeah, that whole little rancho, that, that whole area down there is freaking cursed, dude. I, it's, it's, it scares me just to drive through there, how many businesses have failed and shit. I just stay away from that area, man. Well, he's, just, he's got all the land now that's right across from a rancho where the observatory is. He's going to tear the observatory down. Finally, he's going to re he's going to build Foothills Fire, a brand new fire station, a hotel, a car wash, uh, Bank of America, and like a bunch of other like retail and re stuff. So he just um, my part my friend Paul and Justin they're going to be uh, partners in the car wash. They're turning First Bank into an urgent care center, is what his plans are. The First Bank is only next to El Rancho, so he just bought El Rancho. Yeah, we definitely uh, we definitely need a, an, an urgent care facility. That's for sure. Yeah, because then that one didn't the one in Evergreen by the by the rec center close. I don't Somebody... know if they close, but every time I every time I have an emergency, I call there and they don't. Have, there's nothing. It's, they never answer. So I mean, they're not really an urgent care. They're more of a I don't know what they are. Oh, uh, well, I just can tell you, watch on Thursday because I was up there a couple of weeks ago and we went into we did an inspection up there. So um, that's kind of something I'm working on with like my partners uh, with my friend, Paul and Justin, and uh, they're going to be working with Jack as partners on it because Justin's built like 50 car washes. Like and it's going to be, it's going to be a lot nicer than the one across the street next to big O could be 125 feet. Well, that's pretty, pretty incredible. So Jack's got all that. He's got, all, he's just working on the, uh, an easement receipt on it right now. And that's all he needs for final approval. Well, that's kind of interesting. Anybody else got any interesting projects? I thought I, I had a potential deal, but I got a call today saying that um, they accepted an offer for, from some group in Colorado. And I thought about you guys at first. I'm like, oh, man. But, that wasn't uh, us. That wasn't did us. They give, did, did, did they give you a name? Was it New Western? No, they just said that, that they accepted the uh, LOI from a group from Colorado. New Westerns, New Westerns, really big. They they have offices here. Um, if if they did it, keep an eye out for it because they are very notorious, for just freaking walking away from deals and just yeah, they're terrible people. They're absolutely awful. No, we we hate them. I mean, literally, they're in all the yeah, they're all yeah. If it was them, keep an eye on that property. It may come back on the market sooner than you think. Oh, okay, all right. Well, yeah, send me the uh, send me the I address can, too, because if it's here, we might be able to even see what's going on with it. The, the property, don't, the just, property send it to me, just send it me a text or something. Okay, because I said the property is a multi unit with apartments and houses in North Carolina. So I got a little stunned because the guys, the the the, the guy what I was talking to said like, we haven't been getting a deal, but if you can make us a reasonable, good offer, we could consider it. And I'm like, well, I would want to be a little bit on the creative side here because they want something like 5.8 million for it. And I said, I just don't see your numbers 
And I asked them, could they send me a more detailed uh, T12 or your rent road? Because what they gave me was five months old. I'm like, well, you know, we're going into the spring now. And the stuff you gave me is from starting from last summer. How about giving me an updated version? And next thing I know, I get a call saying that we got a group from California, Colorado that, 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 that we think we're going to go with for the deal. So I'm like, okay. So, you know, it was funny because I got off of LoopNet just by accident because I was just cruising, so to speak. Because as you guys know, eventually I want to go back to North Carolina. And I said, I might get some property in there to, to hasten my departure from Pennsylvania to go back down to North Carolina. And I was like saying, all right, this might be a good start. And the guy, and I, I thought we had a good relationship going on, you know, talking. And uh, he seemed pretty friendly, was eager for someone to buy it. And I asked him how he was he comping these houses because I don't see, I don't, he had like, 30 houses in there with a hundred uh 50 50 multi-unit and 30 houses all in one package. And I asked him, are they subdivided or they separate? Were they add on? And at first he he wouldn't answer anything. And then I said, like, you know, the only reason I'm asking you this is because I'm debating whether or not I should comp these on two separate situations, one as multi-unit, one as housing, and I mean single family housing. And I was like, he said, no, 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 we got all on one deed, da, da, da. you can probably come. Back. And I was just like thinking, either he didn't know, because I definitely, I mean, like, if I were doing houses, I'd comp it one way. If I'm doing multi-units, I'm comping it another way. Why does that sound like a scammer to me? It does. It sounds like either a scammer or it's a daisy chain. And this, this is happening an awful lot. What's basically going on is they're not just taking people's houses from them. They're, they're going out here and trying to hit up investors doing the same kind of stupid stuff. But he does not know what he's talking about. And that was almost yeah. evident from the get go. And I would just say, hey, you know, walk away from that mess. And they're becoming more and more prevalent too. Uh, they think they can get away with it. But with the markets changing the way they are now, they're not going to be able to do that much longer. But this sounds like a perfect example of a scammer trying to fish for some, you know, fish for some money from somebody. And I think, the, honestly, the best thing really is that the fact we got tools, like, you know, yes. you just prop wires free for yeah. the, the paid program. I mean, guys, if you're looking for properties, you're going to get information that's, that's phenomenal. I mean, you're going to get the accurate information. There's stuff on the MLS. Yeah, and, and the thing that is, with this kind of with this deal here, if you got any kind of information from them as far as the address or anything like that, you can go down to PropWire and you can verify what they're talking about. Um, but it just this thing smells like a sounds like somebody fishing for some money is what it sounds like to me. Um, um, okay. Single family houses, you can buy it as a package, but the problem is they're all going to appraise individually regardless. That's just basically how it works. Yeah, so but, that right there was one thing that just kind of that that stuck out to me as soon as you said that. I'm like, wait a minute, hold the phone here, because I've had enough of people that are coming to me with these kind of deals to know that that's not the way that works. Mm -hmm. And well, no, you, know, you could you could get a you could even with a single family you could get a portfolio loan on it. You could do it with a portfolio. No, you're not going to get. But, you're not going to. No, get but see, he, he he had fifty. I, I, I don't know what you said, Kevin. Yeah, he had not, fifty. He had 50 multi units and six right? buildings. Look, and he had talking. 50, he had about 30 to 40 houses. And he had this rancher that it, it was sitting in the middle of no man land and said, This is all part of the property. I said, Well, how are you? How are you? How do you come to this price? Break it out from the multi family and the uh, how, single how big family. is the multi family that you're talking about? Are you talking about a, a duplex or something? Or are you talking about a, a 40 unit building? When you it say was fifty. He had fifty multi-unit and he had thirty houses. So you say fifty. So you're saying one building with fifty units, fifty doors? No, I'm saying he had he had five or six buildings because in in a couple of them he said he had laundromats in the basement. I'm like, no, can I got laundromat in the basement? Yeah, like, just, right. Well, but yeah. the, 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 that's not the question. The question yeah. is, are these are these 50 duplexes or are these 50 units in one building or is it 225s? The way what, that, what are we the, talking about? The, the way that I looked at it or what the map showed me was six buildings, 
50 units. Some of them had 10. Those that had laundromat had eight, but it totaled right, So between eight and 10. Okay. And then on, on, mean, top of, on top of that, he had these single family homes as, as rental units on in the same D, same lot as these 50 units, more to 50 doors. Well, that's, so, and that, so it's and all that's on one. Right. It's all on one D. That's what I asked. I said, I know they got to be on two Ds, and he said, No, it's one D. And I'm well, like, It could be one D. It could yeah, be. Yeah, but it but had it's me. It was an add-on. Yeah, it's, 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 it, it, we'd have to look at it to be specific. I don't want yeah. to get into like another. Another, I beautiful thing, another beautiful thing about being a real estate agent is I have access to all that information, the tools that nobody else gets unless you're a designated realtor. So if you want, that's I can not actually, true. I, that is not true. I'm busting man. your balls. Give me a break. I'm busting your balls. But I do have a really I, do, I mean, I can look it up in two seconds if I had the address. I can tell Who's you what, the deal, what everything looks like. Danny. Danny. Oh, yeah. okay. All right, Danny. Hey, Danny, you got a number on me? Oh, I can uh, I can connect you guys. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely. I can send over the whole property report and everything for you. I, I, can, I can work it up for you. What he gave me. And 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 you can sit here and tell me if I'm just I had one one too many cookies and it, and it making me seem goo goo or <laughs> am, am I being scammed? Or because I just don't understand. See, like I, I I'm used to seeing doors either in a building or in small buildings, but I'm not used to seeing multi units and single family houses in the same track, same hey, deal. Hey Danny, hey Danny. Are, do you have access to CoStar and are you a CCIM? No. Okay, because okay, because if you're talking multi-unit, you really want to start looking at CoStar data and and working with CCIMs, which I'm not one, but I actually happen to be in a mastermind group that does that, and we have CCIMs to look at our multi, you know, all the multi. I, 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 I can, I can, I can, I can the, 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 the places I, I, I have a couple of different tools. It, it, it basically grabs the same information, but it, it puts it all into one place, one easy report. You, you, you can't have, grab the same information, I have, man. I have, I have RPR. And, well, no, it just tells you who owns it and how it's set up and, and, where, and where to go from there. Yeah. We pull a whole stack of information. Okay, it's public information. <laughs> no, no. But, but we pull a whole bunch of data that you're not pulling, man. I guess that makes you cooler than me, man. What can I say? <laughs> Fucking idiot. All right. Gentlemen. Oh, God. All right. Okay. Can... Sorry. Okay, guys. Um, and it's not saying that. It's, it's not saying that. That. Uh... <laughs> Hey, there, there's data when you do multifamily. Okay. There's data that you okay, want to Okay, but evaluate. it doesn't mean, okay, dude, I'm just really not happy. With, I, I don't know why he's coming in here and trying to. Because I invited him as my, okay? And it's now, if you, I mean, okay. I'm trying to, you know, I try to bring resources to it, to everybody. And this is one of my personal friends who's a really good realtor. So okay, I'm sorry, guys. Not a problem. Okay, I just don't want to. Just, have like people... I, I guess I shouldn't have brought it up because it's brought out some but... better side. Okay, guys, and I and I apologize, but it's frustrating because I've been trying to get Danny to come in for a couple of weeks because he's working on this, with some other stuff that we got going on for our group and stuff. Um, and it's like so, and not every you know. So going back to this, it's not uncommon to have a situation where. You have that because I actually, when I lived in Steamboat Springs, I lived at a place that had rental apartments and they also had houses on the same place. It's called Walton Pond. Okay. So how, how, how do you, how do you underwrite it? You have to, I, I don't know on that particular one because I've never actually dealt with one of those. Right. What, what are you talking, you're talking about how to underwrite this property, this one deed? Yeah. All right. So. Assuming this isn't bogus to start with, okay. Which I think Kevin, I, I smell the same rat Kevin smell in here. Um, you definitely need to pull all the rent, the T12s for all those multi units to start with, 
and then you want all the teach, you know, you want all the T12s of the history on each of those individual units. So yeah. you're going to need to do a lot of work to look at all those. I think what Kevin was saying before is even if it's in a portfolio, it's still going to appraise each house individually. Is that what you were saying, Kevin? Kevin? All right, Kevin. I, I think that's what I Kevin was saying. Oh, working very well. Yeah, that's basically what it gets down to. Um, they treat yeah. the, um, and this is basically the states more than it is anything else, state law. They basically treat them as individual pieces of property. And it's like on that situation that Spencer was in, you'd have to make, you'd have to file to have it changed or treated any other way. And yeah. that, that's just not going to happen. And when you got to go get a loan, they're going to get treated individually as well. So they all have right. to have individual, I mean, it's a royal pain to do that. And that's why that whole thing just didn't make any sense to me. And at the same time, if you're saying it's on the same, I mean, same track, how do you have two different things on one track? I don't know. You don't. Well, well you don't. No, Kevin, you could you could have multi, multiple building. We were talking about that last. Yeah, but what, we're not talking about that. We're talking about single houses being on. We're talking about the single house probably being on that multi, you know, on that right. multi so, so track. It could it's be, not going to happen. It could be one. It's deep, not going to happen. I, each each the, house the, still uh, have to appraise separately. But it's not going to happen that way because the the zoning and everything else is different, and that's why I'm saying that that's why that smells so bad because the zoning yeah, itself is not going to allow that. Yeah, that's true. That sounds that that sounds weird to have all those houses zoned right. zoned there. I mean, I guess it would depend on the size of that piece of property and stuff like well, that. Well, it's still not going to it's still not going to work that way because each tract is going to have its own zoning. And you're not going to have multifamily and single family in the same track. It's not going to happen. They're going to make them break them out. That's because well, you're I taxing recall, yes, headed on two Ds because then it would be like yeah. two properties. You know, that's you exactly know the way it would have to be, though. That's the whole point. You know, you know what the first thing you should do is call the county and ask them what the deal exactly. is. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Call the county and ask them what's going on with this piece of property, and is is that kosher to have? All those properties on that one D. You need that, to get on parcel acceptable? viewer. You need to get on parcel viewer and look it up. Don't bother even bother to call. Don't even bother to call the county. Just go on parcel viewer and look it up. Well, I could do that. Yeah. Because that that has all the information. That you got maps, everything that you need to, that, that that shows what's going on there, and that'll tell you. Okay. But maybe just as a pet project, I'm going to do it. Just to just to yeah, see, you might as well learn how to. You might as well learn how to check these things out. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, mean, like, not even, that you're even, not, but yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm not gonna can... contact the agent anymore. But I'm just gonna pull up everything and then just call up the county because it's in North Carolina. And I'm saying, like, did you I find this? Did, did you find this on the MLS to start with? No, LoopNet. On LoopNet. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, that you is interesting. Check that the agent. You can also check that the agent is actually a, le a legit agent. You can check the state website and see if they actually have a real estate license. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go continue on and and uh, find out because I was doing I was doing some underwriting just to you know get just to see if if what they are asking is it really that, and you know and not and I said like if I was really interested in it, I would have to go go down to North Carolina for about five days get to know what's out there and maybe see if it really is worth that kind of money. Then have to have a uh, a home a uh, uh, property inspector come in there, a whole crew to go in there and, and really size it up, see what kind of hidden problems that the person's not seeing. Because of course they on, on looking at those pretty pictures, I'm like, yeah, okay, I don't see any, but it was like the price caught my eye. I, was like, I think Kevin called it. I think Kevin called it. I think it's a scam. <laughs> but you know what? Do your what? due diligence and find out. Yeah. It might be a sweetheart of a deal. Yeah. But believe me, guys, you 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 if if I go forward with this, I I'll I'll create a little pitch deck and everything and say, here it is. What do you think? And I can put you in touch with Danny. He can do that check for you. Yeah, so that's so why I say can, 
because he has RPR. He has some. He usually has some pretty good software. I mean, it's not Evergreen's a very interesting community because it's very affluent. There's a lot of. It's. I mean, he sells some big properties. So several. I mean, most almost every house he deals with is a million dollars at least. Wow. So, so now, in our community, so. Yeah, because see, I know in Lancaster, they got a lot of of landlord who who's going belly up, and I was looking at some of them, and their biggest problem is not only is the tenant didn't pay them their rent, some of them didn't even have insurance. But the worst case scenario, they all got balloons coming up in the next five and six months. I was like, you're crazy, you know. I said, no one, no one gonna take that balloon. In five months, and you want to walk out with this much? Uh, uh-uh. uh. I said they take over it. You might they might break you something off, but I said no. We put before a five million dollar. So I think that was BSing me because I asked them. I said, "Well, when's your balloon do?" And I said, "How much is it?" And then, but they had it at three percent, which doesn't make sense. I said, "Like, did you?" And I asked them, "Did you do any improvement to the property to get that kind of a balloon do?" And they said, "Nah." Like, well, there's something going on here. Do you put liens on it? And I sit here and said, they don't realize that all I have to do is go to Lancaster County and pull up the, the tax record. And I can do that. But I was hoping they would tell me the truth before I spent some time on it. But I said, like, there's about six of them in Lancaster and they bought 30 to 80, 80 units. And, and I know two of them need to be condemned just because of, of what I saw. Um, from a friend of mine who took some pictures for me. And I'm like, nah, we're gonna skip those. And uh, I just looked at it from that way. Now, if I were to go to the land bank, I'd probably get them for nothing, but I would have to put a whole lot of boohoo into it to bring them up to Coles and uh, they, and the market for the rents are not bad, about 12 to 1600. So that's not bad, but it just the, to bring them up that way is a lot more than I'm willing to chew at this stage of the game because I'm a little leery of these bank situation. That's one reason why I wanted to become a lender so that I can generate my own funds in a sense and uh, and still do syndication, but I want to be able to have have a, a piece of a piece of the action, so to speak, from from hey, the. Man, I gotta run. Okay, I'll talk to you Thanks, later. Thanks, Artie. Bye, have Take a good week. Bye. You understand what I'm saying, Kevin? I mean, uh, Kevin and, and Nate? Yeah, I definitely understand that. Okay, so that's why I see here said that when the North Carolina guy said that this Colorado group, they're going to go with them. I'm like, okay, very good. But I was thinking about it. I'm like, but I don't know how they can go through it. If they didn't get, they didn't get the information that I was requesting, why would they go in for it? And I couldn't understand how you can have single family housing and multi unit on the same D. Well, you, like I said, you can. I mean, when you get these weird deals, just reach out to Kevin and I because we can sit there and we can run them through people who can, who can verify it. Danny can pull that information up in a heartbeat because he's got a national RPR, is like an it's like MLS kind of stuff. He has MLSs, but I mean, he subscribes obviously to the areas he's licensed in, but he has RPR, which is national. And he could actually yeah. pull that up and find that deed up. And, you know, unfortunately, we had to, have to witness that. It kind of sucked. Because I've been trying to get Danny on for two years. Wow. He's actually, he, his office is actually in the building. Kevin and I are trying to buy, are going to buy for the for our office. Oh, yeah? So, like I said, he's one of my personal friends. I mean, I, oh, okay. I um, yeah, he coaches, he, he, t- he coached a lot of high school football for his sons. His sons both play it. Ever, oh, well, he'd ever. be a good person for, for you to put that nail stuff on. Yeah. And the players, you know. The no, that's that's CU. That's University of Colorado. But uh-huh. Evergreen's, Evergreen's like, we're 20 miles from Boulder. Yeah. 25 miles. But yeah, his uh, his sons, was one of his, his oldest sons graduating this year, but they played um they played football for Evergreen, and I'm a graduate of Evergreen. I coached there like a while ago and stuff. So Danny knows is like one of my personal friends, and he wants to do – he can help you guys with a lot of real estate stuff. He was offering to help stuff. And if you needed a buyer's agent or somebody, then he would do a, a more of a flat fee for everybody that's in our group. Oh, so okay. I got to see if that'll still happen after tonight. Cause 
Well, so don't, then, some, don't, don't let Ollie get on his skin because Ollie he's not getting on her mind. It's just he's he's not getting on her mind. I've uh-huh. known Ari too long, but it's like crap. I've been you know there's this yeah because I mean Ari's got a huge opinion about realtors and don't use realtors, and I tell people you know what you want a realtor because when a realtor when somebody actually has a realtor in their deal, mm-hmm. even if they're like losing it, a realtor is going to look out for them. And so you're going to feel like the seller is not going to be like kind of seller's remorse. And a lot of wholesalers, and a lot of people are trying to get the properties that so cheap and expensive that, you know, it's cool you to go out and make a profit. We're all in business to make a profit. But right. I think honestly, if you have a realtor, sometimes the deals can go a lot smoother. And you can, on these privy and prop stream and prop wire, you can find on market deals. Kevin and I were on with Benson, who's the the owner of Privy, and uh, there was a property in, in Indianapolis for thirty four percent of ARV. Wow. So literally, that was like, and it was on market. You could call the agent. Yeah, well, I, I tend, I tend, I tend to work better with agent than the seller because the seller is all emotional about it, and I could see him saying like, "Look, I need this. I can't get this. That I can't, I can't give a true number. You know what I mean?" And the last thing I need to be doing is overpaying for something, and I still got to put work into it to rehab it a little bit. If nothing else, you will have to resurface the parking lots, reline them, probably some roofs, some some appliance replacement. That's going to be automatically. At least I would think it would be. Some of them are going to need it. Some are going to need glass, new windows or air conditioning units, stuff like that. That's why I see him saying that I I don't want to overpay for something then i gotta throw another four or five hundred thousand to to generate the rents that i want yep you in a rush no i'm gonna actually just take that off record oh okay because we're at that point i mean i wish that other part i can maybe edit that out i just got frustrated because i'm let me uh